40 minute drive west took us to the Bargson farm, the site of one of the first wells drilled in Bradford County. We were offered $100 an acre, which was going right at that time. It's naturally increased since we signed our lease as people became more informed as to what the gas companies are actually here for. And, you know, I don't begrudge anybody who can get a better contract than what I did. I mean, I went with a local lawyer who was very good with contracts, but at the time, all of this was still so new that they even missed things, which I have felt have come back to bite me. So again, you know, get somebody that you are, it was very reputable if you're considering signing a lease. So we signed that lease. Like I said, we were given $100 an acre. So being farming as what it is, we took it to the bank. I mean, that was $19,000. Caught up on some bills, paid off some loans. It was like winning the lottery. It didn't expect it to be long term. And they came in here in August of 2008 and drilled the well. So we went through the process of the drilling, which took approximately eight weeks. Then the fracking. Come here. And in March of 2009, you can see the damages that runs through the woods up through there. Crossing our fields, crossing other neighbors' properties, the pipeline went in. That brings with it its own set of problems that you really should need to be aware of. Um, when, you si well, when we signed the lease, we were told it was for a 30-foot right-of-way. They do not tell you that they clear cut between 100 and 150 feet. So that permanently destroys a lot of woodland, a lot of natural habitats. Uh, they do reclaim it, but again, this is something that you need to have an explicit black and white in your contract because their processes of reclaiming do not usually follow the conservation practices that have been established, even if you have them on record down at the, well, for us, it's in White Sox. They sit there and they tell you, prove it. So you make numerous trips down to get your conservation plans and you get some very helpful conservation officers who will come out and tell these people that an alfalfa plant field cannot be replaced with a conservation contractor's mix simply because it's fast growing. We went online as far as production in April of 2009. Uh, there's still continuous traffic in and out with trucks, maintenance, work crews, service crews. In June of 2010, a set of these servicemen were out there working. To this day, I can only tell you that for, through Chesapeake, that they were doing maintenance work. Within days, our water changed. We went from having water that didn't seem out of the norm to drawing Alka-Seltzer out of your faucet. And so we called Chesapeake and they came in and a little air monitor sent off all these bells and whistles within three to five seconds and he determined that we had an excessive level of methane. DEP tested that two weeks later. It measured at 56.3 milligrams per liter. DEP also told me that over three, you should have a vent system and a monitor in your house. Our vent system did not get installed until December and Chesapeake has never brought us a monitor. So I have strategically left windows open in my house for a constant airflow for over a year now, even through the winter because I'm afraid of the buildup of methane. We are at a high explosive level. Okay. But we have gotten very good at taking very short showers. We're usually within under five minutes because if you're in the shower longer than that, you do get a dizzy, lightheaded feeling. But nobody can explain why. I can often hold a standard kitchen match to my water and like I said, it is unpredictable, but the methane randomly travels with the water and sometimes it will light. 
quite spectacularly. Just like that. Now, Chesapeake is going to say, well, there's natural occurring methane in the wells already. What do you have? What your, what's your reply to, to a comment like that? My reply is that their post-fracking test, their own, the methane tested 0 0.01 milligrams per liter. And since July of um, 2010, it has tested as high as 64 milligrams. So obviously something has changed. And usually you can method. They say as long as it aerates, it's safe to drink. And usually you can see a little bit of um, gas just aerating out of there. That way you can see it or not. Sometimes you have to yeah, hold it just right. Yep. My issue with Chesapeake right now is independent water tests have shown that there is other contaminants in my water, but DEP and Chesapeake only seem to be concerned with the high levels of methane. We discovered back in November, because at that point we were boarding my daughter-in-law's horses, the water won't freeze. So, but nobody has determined what chemical cocktail is the cause of it. A local water company brings me 25 of those blue five gallon jugs once a month. And because it, without admitting that they were at the cause for this, they did not feel it was necessary to provide water to any of my animals. So therefore I no longer have any animals in the barn. Uh, what animals we do have, we have a herd of 18 beef animals that are in the pasture across the road because that way they have access to a spring fed source because the methane does seem to be a migratory problem. But again, Chesapeake won't admit that they had anything to do with it. We used to have, you know, like I said, dairy animals. We had hogs. We had my daughter-in-law's horses, the cats and the dogs, and I don't let any of them drink the water. So you've got this uh, compressor back there with an access road that's being used by the gas company almost a weekly basis? Oh, daily. Daily basis, and you didn't sign on for any of this? Well, when we agreed to the access road being here, we were all given the impression that they were temporary. Again, this is a term I've learned that the gas company uses very vaguely. Temporary for me is not temporary for them. They're very friendly because they want something from you. They want your property. And they are willing to bend over backwards and answer what appears to be any of your questions. And I'm here today to tell you that for every question you think they answer, there's probably 10 of them they didn't. You want, if you're not satisfied with the answer they give you, please ask somebody else because I won't say the gas company will lie to you, but I'll tell you they withhold information. And they're not as upfront as they appear to be. Pretty intense. <laughs> yeah. You probably can't see anything. Wow. I can see the red glare. Well, I'll put it back on black and white then. Yeah. Just on wow. yeah. I'd love to send a copy of that to my representatives. <laughs> Tell you what, I'm glad I, this is not my land. The biggest thing is the amount of water that is used just in the fracking process and then the rest of the gas extraction and what that feedback does to our water supply. That's 
a huge concern and should be looked at. I mean, this is this is the collective good. This is the commonwealth. This is you know where people should be watching for each other, not just you know momentary monetary advantage. I just think it looks like it's a little more pervasive than I thought. You know, there's a lot of hidden wells you can't see from the roads. If you're if you're real discriminate, you can see some some rises in the land and where they put pads in, but. I think it's in a lot more nooks and crannies than, than I previously thought.